praise the Lord. Amen. What an assignment I enjoy. If you ever become a praiser, you just won't ever be the same. You can't keep your mouth closed. Can't keep your hands down. I know Jeanette, we're coming down White Horse Road and she's like this. <laughs> People looking at her like this. If they don't know what it is, shame on them. Worshiping God. It's good to see everybody this morning. I want to pray and just invite the Lord into this service today. Hallelujah. I believe he's got something special for us. He does for me anyway. I don't know about you. I'm not going to miss mine. Put your hand on your heart so I'm going to miss. I'm not going to miss what the Lord has for me today. Hallelujah. Father, we just praise you and worship you this morning. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, we pray for the prison service that uh, is in Columbia tonight. We ask you, Lord, to touch that. We ask you to touch hearts. We ask that the anointing be there, Lord God, that you minister to people every need that they have, whether they're saved or lost. If they lost, they need you, Lord. If they're saved, they need more of you. And so, God, we just ask you to minister there. We ask you to minister in this service today, those that are out because of sickness or surgery. God, I pray that you would be with them, that you would bless them, that you would touch them. Lord, we'll just be careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for everything in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Would you stand as we worship this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, amen. Are you ready to worship God this morning? Hallelujah. He's worthy. Amen. Praise you, Lord.
glorify you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. We praise your holy name. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord.
God, we thank you, Lord, that you are in our midst, Father God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, rain down upon us, we pray. Hallelujah.
For I am seeking those who will worship me through the blood, through the blood of the Lamb, the truth, the Word made flesh. I am looking for those who will give their hearts in worship, who will give their hearts in praise, will offer up a gift of worship to me. For I am seeking those that will love me and they will just worship me from their heart that will reach out to me in the spirit and love on me this morning, saith the Lord. For I seek that from my children. I seek that from those that have been born again. Those that have come to me and have the new nature, have my spirit residing inside of them. I seek those to worship me, to love me as a son and a daughter would a father. I have that need this morning. For many people do not realize that I have need. I have need for my people to worship me. That is why I seek worshipers. It's because I need the love of my children. I need them today, saith the Lord. And I am seeking those who will worship me from the love of their heart for the price that has been paid for their redemption to worship me in spirit and truth, saith the Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Spirit, come. Hallelujah. 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 God, you're so worthy, God. Hallelujah. For you deserve the glory and the
want you to sing it to him. I want you to lift up your hands to him and just sing only to him. Hallelujah. He deserves the glory. You deserve the glory. As we 
you're so worthy, you're so worthy, hallelujah. We give you glory, honor, and praise today, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we magnify you, oh God. I feel a word of prophecy coming on. The Lord would say to us this day, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Why do my children act like unsaved people that they walk in fear? They walk in doubt and unbelief. And negative words flow out of their mouth because they release their thoughts of unbelief. I have not called my children to do that. I have called my children to be more than conquerors through the blood, through the blood of the Lamb. I have called my children to call things that are not as though they were. I have taught my children through the Holy Ghost to pray in faith and not pray in doubt. To claim victory even when they don't see it. To stagger not in unbelief, but through faith calling those things that are not as though they were. Because I have given my children this faith and I have given them the victory and I have made them overcomers. But yet they walk as the world walks. They doubt like the world doubts. But I have not called you to be unbelieving children. I have called you as just children. And in my word I have said the just shall live by faith. So come out of that pit of unbelief and fear and begin to pray in faith and to begin to speak my word that I have put in your heart. Let my spirit touch you and quicken you and bring you into the spirit and out of the flesh. For I have called my people not to be beggars, but be the head and not the tail. I have called my people to victory and not defeat. I have called my people to speak my word and to be led by the Holy Ghost. So come out of that pit this morning and lift your heart up as you lift your hands up. And worship me and receive deliverance in this house today, saith the God that created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Shut on all of Mahanda. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 This thing's something, whatever the Lord gives you. I want you to shut your eyes. 
Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on the Father. I want you to let him take any image of defeat, despair, or destruction out of your mind. And let him fill you with victory this morning. Hallelujah. I know, I know what the Lord wants to do if you'll let him do it. He, God can't do what you won't let him do. But he will do what you can't do if you will let him. Hallelujah. I want to ask everybody in here, if you will, stand up, lift up your hands, and begin to worship God. And tell him how great he is, how magnificent he is. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can ask or think. According to the power that's working in us. If the power is working in us, he will be released into our situations. If the power of worship, the power of praise, the power of giving, the power, hallelujah, of giving him an offering of yourself this morning. If you'll release that unto him, he'll lift you out of that pit. You'll quit looking to man for deliverance and you'll start looking to God for deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody. Look up and say, hallelujah, I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm coming out of this pit. The devil's not going to destroy me. He's not going to overcome me. I'm already made an overcomer through the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord and worship Him for a moment. You deserve the glory and the honor.
tell you what I feel the Spirit saying to me. Do you mean that you have been through the hell that you've been through and you have seen me deliver you every time and you're going to let this little demon, this little circumstance defeat you? You're going to throw up your hands and quit? Believe in God? Because of this little demon? Wake up and shake yourself. Get up and rebuke that devil. Speak the blood against that devil. Hallelujah. And see the victory that I have for you. For I do not have defeat for you. I did not save you and redeem you to see you defeated by the devil. I have given you everything and put everything in you that has given you victory over every demon and even the devil himself. Hallelujah. So receive victory. Hallelujah. Could we we sing that Satan, the blood of Jesus against you? I was just going to play that. Woo! Glory to Look at somebody say the Holy Ghost moving in this place. Don't you try to hinder him. Don't you try to quench him. Let him touch you. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. I'll take the blood Woo. of Jesus. Father. 
but I like that when he turned my life around. I know there are a lot of people out here this morning that have known that God has turned your life around. But if he hasn't turned your life around, he can do it this morning. Yes. This is an awesome worship this morning. This is so anointed. And when she says, turn my life around, turn around, actually turn around and let God know that you know that Satan is under your feet and that he has turned your life around this morning. So just turn around. Don't worry about who's watching on the internet. We love all of you out there. And in your rooms, in your house, in your hotel, wherever you are, turn around and let God turn things around in your life. Hallelujah. Well, there is no limitation.
Lord has done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. One more. I hate to stop this. Woo! Everybody say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Flood my mind. Flood my heart. Flood my body. Hallelujah. Woo! Shut on the Bahanda. Woo! Can you give us one more? Lift up your heads, O my children, for your redemption draweth nigh. Look unto those skies for one day they shall break open, and they shall say, Come up hither. Lift up your heads and worship me, saith the Lord. For the time is near. For the coming of the Lord is certain for his church. Do not be caught away with the things of this world. But set your affections on things above. For it is harvest time. And I am harvesting in places that many would not like. For I am reaching out to those that have hardly heard of me. And I am drawing them to me, saith the Lord. I am reaching out to those that have reached the end of the road. And they have no place to go. But they have to look up, for I came to save them too. So do not look through the eyes of your tradition. Do not look through religious eyes at people, but look through my eyes and realize there is a soul, and I am reaching out to them. It is harvest time. The fields are already white, nine to harvest. Pick up your tools and get in the field. For you have allowed many things to turn your head away from what I have for you. 
What I have for you concerns other people. Put your focus back on me. Quit listening to the voices of other people. Put your focus on me. For I have a purpose for you. I have a work for you. It is a holy work. It is a righteous work. It is a fruitful work, saith the Lord, that I have called you to. Bring your head out of your situations. Bring your eyes towards me. For you used to be a worshiper and you used to be a praiser. You have let the troubles of this world and the cares of this world take your eyes in the wrong direction. Lift up your eyes unto heaven and worship me and praise me. And you will walk in victory every hour of the day, every second of the day. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, somebody might wonder, well, why is a, a, an interpretation of tongues longer than the message? Because sometimes you, when you get through giving the interpretation, you enter into prophecy. The Holy Ghost in this house. I'd advise you to listen to him. Because he's got good intent towards you. Good things. Not bad. <laughs> Whew. Hallelujah. Whew. Whew. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I wish you could feel what I'm feeling. Mm, you might be feeling more. Hallelujah. How many of you got delivered from something in here this morning? Some oppressive thing on your mind? Raise your hand if you did. Glory to God. Say, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. <laughs> Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Hallelujah. 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 I have not called you to be propped up. I have called you to stand up. I have told you, submit yourselves unto God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. So look up and don't look down. Look out and don't look back. For I am leading you to victory. I have said in my word, the footsteps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. So I need people in this last day that not only know the word, but hear the voice of the Spirit. For the voice of the Spirit will bring alive the word of God in you. You are listening to too many voices that are not of the Holy Ghost. You listen to the voice of the Holy Ghost, your teacher, your comforter, your instructor, the one that inspires you. And you let the word of God come alive in you. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of God. Receive victory and walk in it. It's not just for the morning. It's for in the morning. It's for the next morning. It's for every morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. Somebody's been having real bad problems with headaches. God's delivering you, healing you. Whatever in your body is causing headaches, being healed right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. 
Can we have some ushers? I received this word about headaches for Gail Merritt this morning. She's at home. She's Hallelujah. God, I thank you for deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we claim deliverance. Oh, Satan, the blood is against you. The blood of Jesus. The holy blood. The righteous blood. The saving blood. Is against you. Hallelujah. How many has been delivered from worry in here this morning? Raise your hand. Say it's gone. That's not my call. Huh. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say 2012 is my year. 2012 is my year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Dwayne, if you'd like to pray, sir. Yeah, Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for the Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for touching us all in our own special Yes, Lord. Lord. Just thank you for the, Woo. the presence of the Holy Hallelujah. Spirit. Hallelujah. Bless these tithes and offerings. Bless those that have given those. Mm. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Revival is going to come to some of you. You've been praying for revival, but it's going to be different than you've ever experienced before. More powerful. Hallelujah. You're going to be able to pray at liberty like you used to. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 22, if you will. Genesis 22, verse 1. This is the first mention of worship in the Bible. First time worship is, me- is mentioned. Now, the, the Hebrew word worship, it, it's a verb meaning to bow down, to, to do reverence. And, you know, you don't have to bow down physically to do reverence. You can bow down with your heart because there are people that bow down so much trying to worship the God that they know till their knees are bloody and they still don't get any worship in because they're not going through Jesus. They're not going to the Father through Jesus. You've got to worship God in spirit and the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. Hallelujah. So worship, the word offering is a Hebrew word. It's a feminine noun meaning gift, meaning gift. Anytime we worship, it's a gift from us to God. Present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That is our reasonable service. Anytime we worship God, we're offering God the gift of us, our heart, our love, our being when we worship him. That's why worship is done from an altar. Let me, let's, let's read at verse one. I won't keep y'all long. How many has enjoyed the presence of God this morning? Oh Lord, I have. Just awesome. For Genesis 22, it came to pass after these things. All of things. Abraham came out of the land of the Chaldees. He fathered, after 25 years of promise, he fathered Isaac by promise. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Now, how many know God does not tempt anybody? What does this word mean? It it means, means. (laughs) It's an old, you know, Old English, I guess, tempt had a different meaning then. He tested Abraham. We will be tested to see if we'll believe God. We'll be tested to see if we love God. We'll be tested to see if we obey God. We will be tested on how we respond. We'll be tested. I'm tested many times. Sometimes I make a hundred. Sometimes I don't make a hundred. But I have a better average now than ever in my life because the times that I have missed testings, I was too busy to understand what was going on. You can get so busy that you don't know even when God's t- talking to you or testing you. The word of God was tried with Joseph. He overcame. Noah overcame. Moses overcame. Abraham overcame. He was tested because God was about to ask him something. They would be almost impossible for anybody to do, but Abraham did it. God tempted Abraham, said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. 
And he said, take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac. This was his promise. This is what he'd been waiting on for all these years. This boy was a teenager now. For 25 years, he waited on him. Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee in the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. He said, what? This is, this is just so good. I don't want to move unless God speaks to me. I don't want to go build anything. I don't want to do anything unless God speaks to me. I want to hear from God before I move. Don't you? People say, well, can you hear from God? Yes, you can. He'll talk to you. In the Old Testament, he talked to prophets, priests, and sometimes kings. And in the Old Testament, the way God led people was through prophets mostly. In the New Testament, we all have the new birth. So we are led by what? Led by the Spirit. The Spirit talks to us. So many people do things in the body of Christ without hearing from God. You don't want to do that. He said, offer a burnt offering upon one of the mountains in Moriah. The mountains of Moriah means all the mountains there of Moriah. One of the mountains was called Calvary. One of the mountains was called Zion. One of the mountains was called a Mount of Olives. One of the mountains was called Moriah. One of the mountains was called Scophus. I stayed on that mountain. But this was a particular mountain. When God has something so important that he speaks to Abraham, he says, one of the mountains I will tell thee of. He didn't tell him right then, but he said, I will tell you of this mountain. How many know God gives details when he tells us to do something? If we will seek him, he will give us all the details to know how to do, to un, to how, how, to, how to walk our life out in the purpose of God. He will give us details if we listen. He will tell us. He said, I'll tell you. I'll tell you which mountain. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God told him. He headed in that direction towards those mountains. Now, how many know Jesus was sacrificed on Mount Calvary. This is a picture of Isaac who is a type of Jesus, a type of Christ. The father's only son was going to be offered as a sacrifice for us. I want you to see in a minute what what he called. Then on the third day, then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off on the third day. Isn't that interesting? On the third day, Israel is going to realize who Jesus is. How many believe we've been on this earth for 2,000 years? I mean, for 6,000 years. 2,000 years since Calvary. Six is the number of man. A thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. I heard, I think it was one night this week, might have been last night, where Iran is sailing ships through the Suez Canal. It's a threat to Israel. It's a threat to the world, what they're doing. All I can see is maybe Israel's going to attack them and it's going to create this war of Ezekiel 38 and 39 where that 
Russia, Iran, and these other nations. How many love the Russians? I do. How many love the Iranians? I do. You can take a country and their leadership can be rotten and their people can be good people. Come on now. But a group of nations is going to join up with Iran and Russia and they're going to come against Israel. And it's going to initiate this war that is that is going to be the beginning of the seven year period that God's going to deal with Russia. I mean with uh, Israel. I believe when this war comes, I, I you know the, the the scholars can't they don't really know when this war is going to come. Some say it's going to come right before the right before the rapture. Others say it's going to come in the middle of the tribulation period. I don't know when it's going to come, but it's about to come. The Lord was saying something here on this third day. I want you to hold your place. I wasn't going to do this, but look at Hosea 6. Hosea 6. You don't hear a lot of end time preaching now, but I'm going to tell you, Jesus is about ready to come back. I can tell you that. They talk about 2012, you know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen in 2012, but I'm going to tell you we're close to the coming of the Lord. Hosea 6. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and the Lord will heal us. Talking about Israel here. Abraham was the first Hebrew. He was the father of many nations. But he was the father of Israel. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. Now we're in a period of time, 2,000 years since Calvary, 4,000 years previous to that. The lease is about to run out on this earth for, the, for man to rule. Jesus is about to come back and get his church and then he's about to come back after a seven year period and rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. He's coming. I don't know, they have this thing about preaching everybody into heaven now. I thank God, you know, I, I felt so sorry for that Whitney Houston's family. But I picked up on the last sermon of her funeral yesterday. And there was a pastor named Winans that preached. And he preached on the priorities. And he preached on seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. He said, it's not what you say, it's what you do. It's not the fruit that you talk about, it's the fruit that you have. Jesus is about to come back and he's coming back for a church that's on fire. He's not going to come back for a church that's asleep and in the world because I believe it's true, the church has got worldly and the world's got churchy. <laughs> but there's... There's coming something. We're wrapping up the second day, the 2,000 years. We're the one in the vineyard that comes in at the last hour as Gentiles. Get the same pay as those that labored without the Holy Ghost for all those years, labored under the law. We come in and we get the grace and it said, he that is last shall be first. And he that is first shall be last. Who's he talking about there? I meditated on this to my meditator fell out. The last shall be first. We Gentiles are the last. 
but the first as nations to receive the Lord. The Jews were first, but they're going to be the last to receive it. Because many are called, but few are chosen. How many know God said, you're the least of all people. You, you're, you're the smallest group of all people. So we Gentiles are many. We were called, but the Jews were a chosen nation. 1948, the Jews became, a, Israel became a nation again. How many know that? In one day, they became a nation again. Didn't even know what they were going to name it. Until right there at the end, they named it Israel. God resurrected the Jews as a nation. Nobody, the Antichrist will try to destroy the Jews. He'll, he'll destroy two-thirds of them, but he won't be able to, God will have his, he'll have his remnant. They won't destroy them. All of this has got to happen. The Jews, the nation of Israel, even though there are many Jewish Christians, still have rejected Jesus as a Messiah. But he's coming back to the Mount of Olives instead of the Mount Calvary this time. He's coming back not as a lamb, but as a lion. And after that seven-year period, after what God calls three days, the third day he'll resurrect them. That's the beginning of the Sabbath day, which is tabernacles, which is a thousand year reign and they'll recognize who Jesus is and, G- and, and Jesus will rule from Jerusalem the capital of the world won't you look at this for he have torn and he will heal us I'm going to tell you through that seven year period that's Jacob's trouble man Lord you ain't never seen nothing like it that last three and a half years we don't want to be here I heard somebody say the other night, say, you know, they say, well, why shouldn't the church have to go through the tribulation period? Why shouldn't the church have to go through that? Well, there's all kind of people. My mama, my mama died in 2009. Her body died. She never went through the tribulation period. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people ain't went through it. We don't plan to go through it. But look at this. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn. This is revival they're going to have on the third day. Look at somebody say third day revival. I tell you, the disciples had a revival when Jesus came out of that ground the third day. There's something about that third day. He said he, he, he torn and he will heal us. He have smitten, he will bind us up. Talking about Israel. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up. And she, we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning. He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain into the, up unto the earth. How many know that this last day church is going to get the, just like the Jews, when they see who Jesus is going to get the latter rain and the former rain at one time, we're getting a double portion. Why are we getting a double portion? Because we got a work to do for the Lord. Hallelujah. Look, on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Abraham said to these young men, Abide ye here with with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Every Old Testament saint worshiped through the blood. Every Old Testament saint worshipped through the blood. They brought an offering, a gift, and they worshipped God through the blood. It's talking about worship right here. Worship. I want to tell you, if you blood washed, you blood bought. If you blood bought, you're a worshiper. If you're not worshiping, God's trying to seek you out to get you to worship. One of the things that the devil tries to do is to get us as Christians out of worship. He doesn't want us worshiping. He doesn't want us to 
open up our heart to God because he wants our minds to get so crusted with what's going on around us that it gets out from around us. What's around you is trying to get in you. If you build up a crust to God, Abraham was a worshiper. That's why he jumped up immediately. And he got him some wood, the cross. He got him a fire. That was the fire that fell at the cross. And he took off to the mountain. He said, God didn't even tell me which mountain. He told me to go to Moriah. He'll tell me when I get there. He'll tell me. He did not let his mind become crusted and failing to worship God. If you don't worship God like you ought to worship, you will get weak spiritually. And the thing that is on the outside of you, all of those things that are troubling you, this is the first time worship is mentioned in the Bible. Those things that are, that are, wor- that, that are affecting your life, that are on the outside of you, they'll get inside you. And when they get inside of you, you'll begin to talk about them, you'll begin to think about them, you'll begin to fret about them, you will begin to pray in unbelief. You will begin to, to, to slide with your faith. Instead of growing stronger, you'll grow weaker. Don't nobody shout me down. I don't want nothing on the outside of me to get on inside of me. I want to get so much in worship, in contact with God. that I'm built up in the inner man. And what's on the outside of me stays out there. It don't get inside me. Is the Holy Ghost talking to anybody? Yeah. (laughs) He is. We were created to worship. We see people that are given abilities, that are given talents for purpose. We see them. They're they're given abilities that people hear them and or see them and they think, oh, wow, awesome. Instead of using them for God, they use them for the devil. And the devil sucks them in and destroys them. They begin to worship the wrong thing. Are you with me? Don't laugh at them because the same thing that's in them is inside you and me. If we had the talent some of these people had, would we use it for God or would we use it to bring us things that we can worship. Worship is what brings these people down. They begin to worship the wrong thing. They begin to worship money. They begin to worship fame. Come on now. They begin to worship their own body. They begin to worship cocaine. They begin to worship alcohol. It's amazing. I had this young man came to church for a while, a few years ago. He was a Baptist. I was a Baptist when I got filled with the Holy Ghost because I married a Baptist. I was raised a Baptist. Prayed for that boy, got delivered from cocaine and beer at the same time. Blam! Just like that. He hung around a while and I preached deliverance, I preached healing. I preached a baptism in the Holy Spirit. He came up to me one day and he said, I've got to go back to my old church. said, I don't believe like you do. <laughs> Bless his heart. He just didn't believe the word. Because the word tells all that stuff. You are going to worship something. Whatever you excited about is what you're worshiping. I'm trying to close. <laughs> 
Whatever you're the most excited about is what you're worshiping. If God's not first, he will come to the place where he's not even in your picture. He's not even on the screen. Because what did he do? He said, seek first the king. And then what he's saying? You ain't got no king if you ain't got no king. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that's trying to get inside of you, I'll give them to you. You'll possess them. They won't possess you. How many know God wants to bless us? You say, what if somebody was to drive up out there? Are you materialistic? And somebody drove up out there this morning and said, I want to give you this new Mercedes. What would you do, Brother Porter? I'd say, where's the keys and the title? <laughs> How many know I would appreciate that and, and, and say it's a gift from God? If it was a Chevrolet, I'd drive an Impala. What, you know, would you be glad? Yeah, I'd be glad. But I will not worship that thing. And I will not let that thing take me on Sundays away from worshiping God. Whatever God puts in my hands, I'm going to consider it as a blessing from the Lord. If, it's some, if somebody come up and give you a million dollars, Ronnie, would you turn them down? No, you wouldn't. You'd take it. you say, glory to God. I'm going to give my tithe off of this and maybe an offering. I'm going to enjoy it. But if you come in a church service and something else has got inside of you and consumed your mind and you're not worshiping God, now I'm not talking about physical behavior. I'm talking about inside. You can't see inside somebody. Somebody can have their hands raised and their hearts off over here somewhere else. Come on now. I ain't got nothing to do. I ain't talking about that. But if something's got a hold of you where that God can't even talk to you or you can't even rejoice in the Lord, you better shake that thing off and get it off of you and get it out of you and get God back in you. How do you get God back in you? Oh, just worshiping God, just worshiping God, just praising God, hallelujah. God, God can't get no bigger, but he will get bigger than your problem inside you. Are you with me? Something has got to die if you worship in something besides God. This is good preaching. I think I'll get this. I think I'll get this statement. I had one amen. Man, I wish I could blow this thing. Ronnie McKittrick was here. He would blow it. Who else in here blew this thing? I don't think there's anybody else in here. Who? Ronnie Merritt, you can blow this thing. I want you to blow this thing. I want somebody to lay something down this morning. I want somebody to lay something down. Something is trying to ease in on you that's on the outside of you and take over your worship life, your faith life, your obedience life. Something is trying to get from the outside in. If you will break that crust and become a worshiper, the devil won't ever be able to do it. The devil won't ever be able to do it. I was thinking about when we soaked over there for a year in the other building. Six nights a week from 7 to 11. And then I think we cut it down to 10. Sometimes we'd go to midnight for a year. God. I'd come in here and stand behind the pulpit. I was so drunk I couldn't hardly stand up. Revelation just coming me out of the word of God. What did, what did I do? I put my affections on the things above and heaven come down and fill my soul. I didn't, somebody say, well, the terrorist blowed your car up. I said, glory to God. That's all state's problem. Amen. I don't know, maybe they don't cover terrorists. But God does. <laughs> he'll, he'll give you something new. Don't you just take say this crust is coming off of me. It's coming off. 
This thing is leaving me. What's that trying to get a hold of me? It ain't going to get a hold of me. Something bigger got a hold of me. I'm a worshiper. Glory to God. Ron, you play. Will you, will you blow this? Did they have these in the Navy? I didn't think they would. Somebody shout when he blows this thing. Say, no more. No more. I will not be controlled anymore. <laughs> You're doing good, son. Doing a lot better than I am. You'll do it. Somebody say, you can do it, Ronnie. I told you he could do it. Look at somebody say, that devil ain't going to steal my worship. Help him, Lord. Thank you, Ronnie. (laughs) Thank you. He probably dizzy now. How many be honest and raise their hand and say, this sermon talked to me this morning? Say, is that stuff getting out of me? It ain't going, it ain't, this ain't good English, but you have to forgive me. This ain't even going to get on me. It ain't even going to get on me. I'm not going to lie to you because I got the blood. There was a sacrifice made on Calvary. I don't have to put up with that stuff. What's out there ain't going to get in me. It's going to stay out there. It's going to bow down to me. I ain't going to bow down to it. It's got to give. I ain't giving. Hallelujah. Oh, we appreciate you hitting on this web today. We appreciate you joining us through the webcast. We love you so much. Pray God bless you. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, he loves you. Will you be Jew or Gentile? He loves you. He'll come into your heart if you ask him. If you'll just release your faith, believe with your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus will come in and say, Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. You died for me. You shed your blood for me. Cleanse me from my sins. Come into my heart right now. I confess you as Lord and Savior. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. If you're sick, I pray God heal you right now. If you're bound up, I pray God deliver you. I bind cocaine. I bind every drug, every alcohol spirit, every spirit of addiction. I bind them over you in Jesus' name. I command them to go from you. Hallelujah. Lord, fill people with the Holy Ghost right now, I pray. Fill them with hope. These people lost hope. Fill them with hope. If that thing gets on the inside of you, it will take your hope. Don't let it do it. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening. Glory to God. Nathan, would you put on shout? Paul,